Hello guys, I'm Sorfancy and welcome in the second devlog for this game that I don't have a name yet. I'm really bad with names. We have already established that. Anyway, in the previous devlog I said that I'm doing sort of a challenge that every month I want to create a game for some amount of time, I would say at least a year. But that's not what you are here for. You are here probably for this specific game. I hope so. So from last time you can see that I have created sort of a custom uh, de demo map which I used to test out, etc, etc, and let's walk through it. For now, let's just ignore this arrow that's hanging in there. It's It has its purpose. And you can see that right now it's just a small test map for testing. It's test map, you know. I have also implemented first traps, such as these. And what it basically does is with, if you step on this, it will shoot arrows and possibly kill you. Not right now. Right now it will only shoot these weird arrows. As I said previously, I want to a whole game happen in sort of a dungeon. It main goal could be possibly to escape from the dungeon. If you have seen Sword Art Online, it may be something similar as Aincrad, maybe. Not sure yet. The original idea was to have the goal of the game to sort of level up, like that would be your only goal. Let's say that you would have 20 minutes for every game and who will get the highest level will win pretty much, as the game would have scoreboard etc etc. But I think that it's not really that interesting for a player, as it wouldn't be that interesting for me to be honest. So I thought that it could be much more interesting to try to escape from uh, that sort of a dungeon. I probably haven't said it yet, but I am going to do a lot of procedural generation with uh, this game because I don't have time to make uh, that content by myself. Let me show you why this trap is actually so freaking awesome. And it's, it has something to do with the procedural generation that I talked about. So every time you move it, it will kind of a change. So I can spawn this several times in the map and every time it will look a little bit differently. I'm actually really excited about this. I know it's super simple, but it's cool. it's a really cool. I like it. I have also set up public variables with this so I can change the position of this trap or position of this shooter sort of. Let's say that I want to put a barrel transform for 600 bit too far, but doesn't matter, and trap transform a little bit so more forward on x-axis, so let's set it plus 20, and you can see it works quite nicely. And uh, the, all the other map, uh, and all the other traps weren't affected in any way. It's all the one uh, blueprint. And let me, let me actually show you how it looks like, because it's really not that complicated. So everything is actually set in construction script. I have uh, few fixed meshes in this, which are these barrels, arrows, and this table, I think. Yep, the bench. And I also have these four uh, random objects that I can put anywhere I want. And what I would do then in construction script is, here, this is just setting for, of uh, public variables, but this is where the magic happen. So what it basically does is to set each of these random variables, right, these, these random objects, take a array where I input few different meshes. I have right now, right here, I have uh, seven of them. It will randomly choose one of them and set it. And this process is same with each of these meshes. So every time I refresh it here, it will change. So what I can, what I can do now is to just randomly despawn somewhere on the map and every time it will be a bit different and I can manually edit it with these public variables if I need to. If you are interested in this in tutorial for that, I'm sure that I can do that. Just let me know in comments. I would love to do that because I actually think this is super cool. And I think that I will use this in much bigger scale in this game. I've also sort of reworked the fighting mechanics and added one. I could have seen that I had this kick with uh, teleporting, but I have uh, disabled that. And that's simply because uh, a lot of times it happened that you would get stuck in the wall and I haven't really found a solution how to fix it. I left it only with uppercut and that's simply because with this you can teleport in front of him and it's very unlikely that he will have some wall in front of him etc. So this works still fine. But if you wanna use kick, you won't teleport, you just need to make sure that you hit him with it. But uh, as you can see, he still finds where your enemy is and make sure that you face him. I have also added the mana system, which you can see on the right, but it doesn't really look that well right now, all right. So every time if he uses teleportation with uh, this martial art, it will, it will decrease mana and then 
add it again slowly, like really slowly. I don't want player to spam this. That is another thing that I have added and that's this magical attack. And I will actually even explain how this all works. So what you will do is to press right click and it will start charging these mana boss or whatever he does. Right now there is nothing actually, but if you press the like button he will find actor and shoot it at him. And right now he chose that one. I will probably need to rework it a bit so he doesn't uh, choose them randomly but uh, he uh, shoots at the nearest one or something like that. We will see. That magic has actually a pretty interesting animation setup so let me quickly show you how I did it. So what, what will happen once you press the right click it will go right here into magic 01 which is just that movement of putting it together and your hands into this position and then if you will still be holding it it will switch into magic ready which is just animation looping of this charging it so you can do it however you want as long as you are holding right click button and once you release it it will go into magic magic shoot or if you release a right click button before clicking left click button it will go right back to idle run so this is just a setup how to play animation as long as you are pressing just one button if you wonder how, how I check or find actors near me, that's super simple and I use it for teleportation and for that magic. And let's flip this, check if enemy is near, it's macro, so I will actually need to rework it to function, but doesn't matter right now. So what I simply do is to create sphere trace, it will create it uh, for a distance that I set right here from the player. And then once it is set up, it will look for pawns. If it finds him, it will get me his location right here, etc, etc, and all this funny stuff. So if you want to create similar systems, Sphere Trace is exactly what you are looking for. All right, that's everything for this tutorial. Wait a minute, this is, this is not a tutorial. Well, I explained something, so it can work as tutorial as well. This was improv, I didn't plan this. <laughs> anyway. That's about it, I suppose. Uh, sadly, I have some behind the scenes which I will play behind that. I, I don't know why I did that. I was just testing microphone, I swear. I really swear. And um, that's about it. So fancy out. Hello there. Is that you, my dear Watson? I was meaning to speak with you. You are aware of that, aren't you? That's an Asian way how to say, you know. You know? <laughs> well, that will be about that. So. <clears throat> so, what what did you want to talk about, dear Watson? Oh, I'm sorry, I am Watson. What a weird man am I? <laughs> what the f*** am I doing? <laughs> well. You are indeed quite strange today, Watson.